Okay, first cut. It's going to be a toughie. We got the saw blade all the way out so it gets as much vertical cut as possible because I want to stop it as close to the edge of this cutout of this board. We're cutting a big thick board and we're going to stop it at the cut and then turn it off. So. Piece of cake. So here we are, we're going to use uh, the Makita saw, saw, whatever, for clamp to the table here. We have a melamine guide. We're going to drop this in and cut it as close to the edge as we can. It's all attached tightly so that when it cuts through it doesn't fall off and break these edges. Here's an interesting about anything about the Makita uh, carpenter saw, worm gear saw. Um, when you're, it has a nice little hook on it, a joist hook, but what's really cool is uh, when you're done with it, of course the thing you do is you hang it, you lower it by the rope <laughs> to the ground. So you lower it to the ground and it stays like that, doesn't fall over, Japanese. Okay, let's see if we can do this without cutting the wire off here. Yeah, have it. And now to the end. Here we are turning down the main shaft that the disc sander was going to rotate on. It's actually a little larger than one inch and uh, it turns out that the uh, Chinese uh, pillow blocks, which I'm using to hold up the end of this thing, are a little less than one inch so I kind of got to take them down. Yesterday I didn't know how to spell machinist and now I are one. Yeah. Nah. So now they fit. Yay. Wonderful. Well here we are with a test run and everything worked perfect. It flipped properly and everything. But the problem is is this right here where um three thirty seconds low on the table which means we have to raise these sh we make these shims that go below the pillow blocks we need to make them uh, 3 64 inch thicker or deeper and then they'll work so here are the shims I fabricated that are going to go under the pillow blocks and as you can see, what I need is 1.859. And that measures, you get one side is close, the other side's off a little bit. So I made some, I got some shimming material, which is just basically a piece of, you can barely see it, but this is a five thousandths piece of uh, mylar, and that'll go on this side with a hole on it. And you can see now this area, there are them all in place. Got one left at the end. That's the one we're going to put in right here, and they're all in place. The way this will work is with the disc sander attached to the underside. It will be weighted toward the back, so there'll be a stop back here underneath, and it won't let it go any further. And then, when um, 
you flip it, which will go this direction, it'll be naturally weighted toward the front, so it'll lock it into a little lock that I'm going to have in the back side. And so that should work just fine. The question is, is, is this butcher block table strong enough to um, withstand the weight of an 80 pound disc sander? Oh look, we have a smokestack. We're um, welding the legs onto the table now. Created this brace, which hopefully will add strength to the entire unit, and a cross brace here, which also acts as a stop for the for the acts as a stop uh, for the flip tap portion. The legs, I put little feet bottoms on them. I'm going to use um, hilties, uh, drill them into the floor, and then um, they'll go in like this as they get extended after pulling them out. Then I can back this the the bowls back and it can act as a leveler so they'll actually level things plus they'll keep the table nice and square. So the legs are on and they're in place and right now this top has been attached here so it can't move and it's level. It's the same distance here as it is here so the thing is level top and bottom. This is the exposed condition where the uh, this sander would be visible from the top. And the idea is I need to create a stop that runs between here and here so when it comes around it stops. It'll be back weighted so it should flop right against the stop and stop. Hilti bolts are in and the uh, table's leveled. Uh, Mike's uh, demo hammer went through the floor like it wasn't even there. Adding a couple of uh, Stiffeners in here because the whole table is like galloping Gertie in the uh, in the short axis. Now it's it's set. I'm gonna put one more right under there just right now. So here we are with the complete, or more or less. For some reason, this edge seems to line up now. It's just slightly off. Don't know what happened because it wasn't giving me problems before, <laughs> but it is now. Okay, so all you do is it's the the. This sander is actually heavily loaded on the back side here. So all you do is you push on it and it comes up and it just comes right over. And it's actually kind of wedge fits in there against the stop. So it's just set. Um, th these are almost perfectly, but this one is slightly high and I haven't figured out what happened, but I don't care. It's working just fine, but it's great. It's just a tad lower, which is actually perfect. Works great. I don't think I'm going to have a problem with it. It looks like it's going to be all right. Happy for me. Hey, check it out. It took me almost no time at all to completely cover it with crap. Ha <laughs> ha! Workbench shoe. Ah, ooh, ooh.